You're watching La Chaine, the French language television network of the Ontario Educational Communications Authority. Due to production problems, the broadcast version of the Working with Assertiveness series consists of only one program. Therefore, we are broadcasting program one at this time. The training tapes that you can purchase contain both assertiveness programs. Welcome to TVO Home Studies. Next, we present Working with Assertiveness, a two-part series on developing assertive behavior in your business and personal life. If you would like to become more assertive, we recommend the accompanying learning packages. The package designed for individual use includes a 144-page practical guide to achieving self-assertion, plus an audio cassette with practical exercises to promote self-assessment and self-awareness. A package for business training sessions is also available. It includes a VHS video cassette of the program, plus a trainer's manual that includes exercises, handouts, workshop outlines, and in-depth information on techniques presented in the series. At the end of the program, we'll tell you how to order the packages. control of your working life, you need to be assertive, and that's quite different from being aggressive. I consider that assertiveness is the ability to obtain one's own way immediately, rather like the sort of SAS storming into a room and freeze. It's getting what you want, asking for what you want, uh, and, and making sure you get it. From experience, I think that people think it's more power related and they tend to think assertiveness is aggressiveness. It's controlling the situation, not just your own view, everybody's view. Being assertive helps you feel positive about the way you handle problems at work. Self-respect. It leaves others feeling positive towards you. Respect from work colleagues. And helps get more of what you want. It's a technique that seems simple at first, but needs to be learnt. Rennie Fritchie is an international consultant in assertiveness training. These managers from Marks & Spencer are learning the first steps in how to be assertive. Assertiveness can transform your work life too. What exactly is it? Being assertive means being honest with yourself and others. It means being able to say what you want, what you need or what you feel, but not at the expense of other people. It means being self-confident, positive, and understanding other people's point of view, and being able to negotiate in a rational adult way. It means being able to negotiate and reach workable compromises. Above all, being assertive means having self-respect and respect for other people. Sounds quite simple, but it's quite different from being aggressive. Being aggressive means manipulating people, getting your own way at the expense of other people, making sure that you always come out the winner and never mind what happens to anyone else, giving no consideration for others at all. Being passive means putting up with all kinds of things in order not to rock the boat. It means holding back, not speaking up, uh, being a victim, uh, not saying anything in a difficult situation and afterwards feeling what I should have done, what I could have done, oh dear, it's awful, that was awful, I'm awful, life's awful. Being assertive is about being able to manage difficult situations in order that you say the right thing in the right way at the right time and feel good about the outcome. It's necessary, of course, in order that people have uh, more of the outcomes that they want. So you do get more of what you want. But just being assertive isn't going to get everybody all that they want all of the time. There are times when people are assertive and you don't get what you want and it doesn't go right. How do you achieve it? There are three basic steps to being assertive. First, show the other person you listen and understand their problem. Next, tell them what you think or feel. Then say what you'd like to happen. Be prepared to suggest several options so that you can reach a workable compromise. Next, we're going to see actors recreate typical scenes in the workplace and see how being assertive helps them. Hello, sir. 
sorry to have kept you all. Mm. Oh, thanks. Where's David? Um, oh, perhaps I should explain. Um, David's asked me to talk about the new manpower project. Oh, thanks. Um, especially about uh, staffing levels. Uh, David's going to be tied up for a couple of months. Oh, right. Um, Anyone we know. <laughs> as the project's been brought forward, he's asked me to stand in for him. Um, I hope that's okay with everyone. Oh, makes a change to see a new face in charge. Is David intending to make a habit of this? Oh, no, no. As I say, it's just for... So what's first on the menu? Staffing levels? Uh, well, that's actually third on the agenda. It's first in my book. Talk of over Manning, we've got more deadwood than a timber yard. There are blokes in my department whose idea of a hard day's draft is taking the wrapping off the sandwiches. I suppose that's where Dave is now, off to see our wonder boy about it. <laughs> I don't know. In my day, you had to work to get to the top. Now they take them straight out of the sixth form. Well, I'm not sure it's as simple as that. Listen, you may have plenty of deadwood, but sales is a different story. I haven't got the staff. I haven't got the hours in the day. Malcolm, you're running a department now. You're not out on the road anymore. Here, it's all about organisation. You say in sales is disorganised? I've seen better organised riots. You've got to learn about people, Malcolm. Responsibility. Learn to delegate. I would delegate, Brian. I would delegate if there was anyone to delegate to. As it is, we're all putting in a ten-hour day. My point exactly. If you thought a bit more about structure. Sales is the best structured department in this building. It works the hardest and it brings in the orders. Uh, perhaps we should get back to the agenda. It's too long since um, you were up against it. Andy, I believe you've got a point to raise. In my day, we learned the job first. and then... In your day, you rubbed sticks together. Item A, the installation of new in-house communications. Um... Well, we were hoping to have the new phone system installed by the autumn, um, but I'm sorry to say that it now looks pretty unlikely. Last time, you said it was all sorted out. Well, yes, I did. Um, but since then... Uh... Andy, did you or did you not say you were ready to go ahead? Well, the thing is, the department's been under a lot of pressure. Well, we all have, laddie. The point is, you said you were ready, and we planned accordingly. So surely the answer is yes. Well, I suppose. Right, so what's next on the laundry list? Oh. Now, you're in charge, courtesy of Dave. Well, only provisionally. Um, uh, next item. Sales projections. Malcolm, I believe oh, you've got... You won't need me for this. Well, I think Well, Malcolm's not the only busy bee in the hive. Yes. And I haven't got all day. I do appreciate your wish to get on, Brian. However, David has tabled this subject for discussion. We'll try to be concise, but I, I do think that ten minutes of your time would be well spent. Very well, say your piece. Um, Malcolm, David's handed you responsibility for the new sales forecast system. How are you getting on with it? Gee, my love, I am up to my eyes in it right now. Okay? Good. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have a load of staff appraisals to knock off, I would have wrapped up those forecasts a long time ago, as it is. You people seem so keen. Mm -hmm. Have you done Liz's appraisal? Liz? Easy. Smashing little secretary, sign my name, and that's Liz done, eh? That and the Tatar take lunch after, eh, Andy? <laughs> All right, so, um, we'll say that sales forecasts are in hand. Most of the behaviour during that meeting was either aggressive or passive. Jean was struggling to keep control, though she did manage to be assertive once, and it did work. She used the three steps. Uh, next item. Sales projections. Malcolm, I believe you've got... You won't need me for this. Well, I think no, Malcolm's not the only busy bee in the hive. Yes. And I haven't got all day. I do appreciate your wish to get on, Brian. However, David has tabled this subject for discussion. We'll try to be concise, but I, I do think that ten minutes of your time would be well spent. Very well. Say your piece. Sorry, Liz. I know. Still, I remembered. Right? Three minutes. Now, written appraisal. Got it somewhere. Though, do we really need it? I mean, we know one another. You've done a great job. Take it. That is read, and I can fill in the rest of the details later. But I want a proper appraisal. Or do you mean I'm not worth the trouble? 
Liz, you know you're my right hand man. Well, person. All right. You want the form done? I'll put it somewhere. Here. Okay, Liz, don't give me a hard time, love. Cheer up. It's not every day your boss tells you you're great. Now, main job elements. Shorthand, typing, organising meetings, keeping my diary, filling my life with sweetness and joy. Well, I do make decisions. When you're not here, I have to. Of course you do. Performance. Well, what can I say? Times you stop me putting my foot in it, eh? <laughs> Timekeeping. Fine. Letters. Fine. Appearance. Fine. Layout. Blah, blah, blah. All excellent. Now, future potential. Well, I know enough about the department now to make decisions, and I've been burning up on the research side. And that potential high. Career direction. Now, this is interesting. Oh? Well, between you and me, I should say, very exciting. Really? Whoosh! You just hang on to my coattails with your nose. Is that it? Look, Liz, I can't just go busting in up there demanding promotions. I have to fight hard in a firm like this. Actually, I was thinking about me. I've got skills and I want to use them. Now, there are two research jobs coming up. Is there any point in me bothering to apply? What is this, Lizzie? You're walking out on me? No. Well, it's not fair. I've tried talking to you about it. Last year when I asked about promotion, you said if I worked hard. Well, I have, and I missed two chances. And now you're saying I've got to miss two more. Well, it's not fair. I don't want to be a secretary all my life. It just doesn't seem fair. It's not what I expected. Well, it's not what I'd expected. Dear, oh dear. I thought this was just going to be quick. Routine. Quite spoilt my morning. Both characters have lost control. Rennie Fritchie has some advice to offer. Well, I'm bewildered. Liz is a very good secretary. I don't want to lose her. But she's inexperienced. I think she's trying to run before she can walk. Don't you think you might lose her anyway because of this aggressive behaviour? No, she's got a good job. Liz, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm really fed up. Well, I must say, I find that quite surprising. I'm not surprised. I was not only listening to what you were saying, but watching your body language. You both leaned forward across the table aggressively, shouting your messages at one another. And then you opted out, stopped listening, and you opted out, started sulking. You were nearly ready to go then. A real mess. There are three steps to assertiveness. I understand your situation. However, this is what I think, or what I feel, and this is what I'd like to happen. The word however is very important. But is a stopping word. However is a linking word. I think you'll find after you've practiced it a little while, assertiveness comes naturally. I appreciate that you want to keep me. But, however, I don't want to be a secretary all my life. So I'd like to discuss my career prospects a bit more. Fair enough, Liz. You're ambitious, right? There's nothing wrong with that. My point is, I don't think that you've got the experience for the researcher jobs that are coming up. Let's look at the basics. Let's look at what you can do. I can see it's a good idea to go back to basics. On the other hand, I still feel I'm good enough for the researcher's job, and I'd like to talk about going for it, as well as any other future prospects. Oh, come on, Liz. I've already told you, you haven't got the experience. I will give it some thought. I understand I may not have the experience and need more. And I'm a quick learner, so I'd like to discuss ways of getting it. Good. It's good that you're willing to give it a go. Like the other jobs, research means working across departments. It means getting involved in lots of meetings. I suggest we start from there. I'm not promising anything, mind. I know you're not making any promises. If I were to work with you on some kind of training plan over the next few months, I think I'd have a good chance for the next vacancy. And it would give you enough time to find a replacement. Okay. That seems a reasonable compromise. 
Let's uh, take it from there. Liz used the right body language to stay assertive. Don't give the wrong body signals to detract from your message. Liz also managed to avoid a confrontation and reach a workable compromise. We also saw how Malcolm managed to control his instant aggression and stay assertive. If you start to lose control, count to three and give yourself a moment to calm down. And I'd like to talk about going for it. Malcolm's instant reaction was anger. Oh, come on, Liz. I've already told you, you haven't got the experience. Then he gave himself time to respond and carried on being assertive. I will give it some thought. As you know, Brian, um, David's been away working on the overall... In this manner. scene, Jean has to use several assertive techniques which we'll replay later. They help her to break bad news to Brian. I think, like all of us, you're probably aware there are some major changes in the pipeline that are going to affect us all. You know, how we work and so on. And uh, I particularly wanted to hear your thoughts on the, on the question of early retirement. Oh, chance would be a fine thing, golden handshake. Costa del Sol five years early, look you beggars, while we plough on here. <laughs> well, as I say, um, David's been investigating plans to slim the organisation down, and uh, last week the board decided to offer a number of um, voluntary redundancies with a view to streamlining our operations, uh, to some extent at least. Oh, if you want volunteers, there are some I know who think works what you do for a rest between tea breaks. A further board decision was that all those already within eight years of retiring should be awarded early retirement. Um, well, you know, you fall into that category. I've been here for 23 years. Yes. Early retirement? Early retirement? This is hell of a shock. Yes, I know it must be a shock. However, as a colleague and as the new head of personnel, I wanted to tell you myself, just as soon as we knew. Tell me yourself? You? I was running a department before you even arrived. I don't believe it. Yes, I can understand you're upset and that it's hard to believe. Can you? That shows some insight. This bloody company has betrayed me after years of experience. Yes, I can understand that it must seem the company's let you down and that all your knowledge and experience are going to waste. Let me down? Took me down the drain, more like. <laughs> Don't know how I come to think of it. There's nothing new there, is there? Twenty-three years I've spent holding this place together. That come in, run the place for six months and then go, and who's to pick up the pieces? Yes, you've done a difficult job under sometimes really trying circumstances. And this is my reward. I do understand that this all comes as a shock to you. However, just lashing out at me or the company only gets in the way. Makes it difficult for me to help you. Please. I'd like us to begin discussing the various options that are open to you. Options? Now, look, I can't help if you shut me out, and I want to help. What I'd like us to do is to take a good look at things one stage at a time. Nobody say you need leave tomorrow. Don't imagine I'm sticking around. If I'm not wanted, I'm off. Brian, please, just, just give me a minute to talk this through. Hmm? A little while ago, you gave me the impression you wouldn't be averse to a few extra years in the sun. Hmm. Did I? Listen, I'm not going like a lamb to the slaughter. I've got experience up here they need. Now, a moment ago, you wanted to storm out. And now you say you want to sit tight. There's some area there's compromise, surely. By working with assertiveness, Jean's managed to stay in control and calm the crisis. Here are the three techniques she's used. First, fogging. Aggressive people need help to slow down and listen to you. By agreeing with some of what they say, you can take them by surprise and calm things down without losing your integrity. But this is hell of a shock. Yes, I know it must be a shock. However, as a colleague and... As the new head of personnel, I wanted to tell you myself, just as soon as we knew. Tell me yourself? You? I was running a department before you even arrived. I don't believe it. Yes, I can understand you're upset and that it's hard to believe. 
Can you? That shows some insight. This bloody company has betrayed me after years of experience. Yes, I can understand that it must seem the company's let you down and that all your knowledge and experience are going to waste. Let me down? Took me down the drain, more like. <laughs> well, now I've come to think of it, there's nothing new there, is there? Twenty-three years I've spent holding this place together. That come in, run the place for six months and then go, and who's to pick up the pieces? Yes, you've done a difficult job under sometimes really trying circumstances. Next, Jean used negative feelings assertion. Say what behaviour upsets you, how it affects you, and what you'd like to happen instead. Let me down, took me down the drain more like. <laughs> well, now I've come to think of it, there's nothing new there, is there? Twenty-three years I've spent holding this place together. That come in, run the place for six months and then go, and who's to pick up the pieces? Yes, you've done a difficult job under sometimes really trying circumstances. And this is my reward. I do understand that this all comes as a shock to you. However, just lashing out at me or the company only gets in the way. Makes it difficult for me to help you. Please. I'd like us to begin discussing the various options that are open to you. Options? Now, look, I can't help if you shut me out, and I want to help. Finally, Jean used discrepancy assertion to try and clarify what Brian really felt despite his anger and confusion. This brings them nearer to a workable compromise. A little while ago, you gave me the impression you wouldn't be averse to a few extra years in the sun. Oh, did I? Listen, I'm not going like a lamb to the slaughter. I've got experience up here they need. Now, a moment ago, you wanted to storm out. And now you say you want to sit tight. There's some area that's compromised for us. So how do they reach it? Now, Brian, let's take a look at the options. See if we can't come up with something. All right, but let's get it clear. You're saying that I'm getting me cards and I'm out? No, I'm saying that everyone within a certain range is being asked to take early retirement. Not right at once, but sometime over the next year. Fine, great. But one way or another, I'm out. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that all those within eight years of retirement will be asked to retire early within the next 12 months. Nobody wants you to disappear tomorrow. Huh. But when all's said and done, Sometime next year, I'm not going to be around. Yes, it's true. But nobody means right away. There's lots of possibilities. We ought to be looking at them. All right. We'll take a look at them. Well, one suggestion is that you adjust gradually. By... Through being assertive, Jean kept calm and so helped Brian to the best compromise possible. And she's managed to keep a working relationship with him. None of the characters are transformed by being assertive, nor will you be. But they have started to take control. Here's Brian at the departmental meeting one week later. I can't say that I'm over the moon at my retirement. And I still think it's a mistake, mind, experienced blokes like me. But I'll concede it is better to go gradually and see some major jobs done. And it takes me past my 55th, which ups my pension a bit. They say there's money in leisure, don't they? And I realize you had to try and soften the blow a bit, so no grudges, whatever I said at the time. Good. Malcolm, how was your month? Well, sales forecasts have gone very well. I see I'll be dealing with that under item three. Then I had the appraisal. Lizzie's came as more of a surprise to me than you, I expect. She came on pretty strong at first. But you've sorted out your differences. Aye. Own up. Who won? Nobody won as such. She had ideas about promotion, which I thought were premature. However, she's keen, obviously got a lot to offer, and eventually we agreed she needed wider experience. So if it's all right with everyone here, I'd like to invite her into this meeting to begin to get a feel for things. Great idea. Come in, Liz. Come and take a plunge in the sharp pool. You've chosen just the right moment. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Assertiveness takes time and practice to master. So start off with the three steps. Show the other person you listen and understand. Say what you think or feel. And then say what you'd like to happen and try to reach a workable compromise. By being assertive when you want to be, you'll start to take control of your working life.
If you would like to become more assertive, you can order the 144-page text and audio cassette for $35. Or if you would like to conduct business training sessions on assertiveness, you can order the 61-page trainer's workbook and VHS video cassette of the program for $107. To order, have your Visa or MasterCard ready and call Toronto 445-5333. Outside Toronto, call toll-free 1-800-663-1800. Making learning a pleasure.